Hello guys welcome to my channel Thrivolt. Today we are gonna discuss about Honeybee College for Explosive Detection. Where you will witness the process of collecting, qualifying, training, and transforming honeybees into explosive detection specialists. To begin, honeybees are drafted from their hive and collected inside a chamber with the help of a specially designed handheld device. They are then transferred to a lab and chilled to slow down their movement for handling purposes. Next, the bees are placed into their harnesses and left for about 30 minutes to get used to their new environment. Automated machine, the bee loading machine, was developed to make this task less tedious. The bees are kept in the harness for a few days before being released back to the hive. The training process involves conditioning the bees to associate the explosive scent with a sugar water reward. After four rounds of training, the bees that voluntarily pair with the explosive scent are ready for field work. Two monitoring methods are used to track the bees' response. The first method involves using a camera to record the bees up close and interpreting the output to determine when the bees signal a high likelihood of explosive detection. The second method uses an infrared lead to detect if the bee has its tongue out or not. To test the bees' explosive detection skills, six cartridges with six honeybees each are loaded into a handheld detection device. The device exposes all 36 bees to the air in the bag for 6 seconds, and if a bee extends its tongue, the corresponding square turns from green to red, indicating a positive detection. Bees can be trained to detect different types of explosives, allowing the device to detect not only the presence but also the type of substance. Honeybees are an attractive alternative to sniffer dogs for explosive detection due to their quick training time, lower maintenance cost, and suitability for certain applications. For example, bees can be trained to detect landmines, but instead of walking across a minefield to monitor their behavior, drones are used to capture footage of the bees clustering around areas where mines are buried. This approach could help identify hidden landmines in the ground. The African giant PW traps are typically used for sniffing landmines since they're effective and only weigh a couple of pounds, even though bees can be trained to detect landmines. Researchers soon realized that walking across a minefield with a handheld detector to see whether the bees stick out their tongue wasn't the best. So instead, they release the bees and use drones to monitor them. The trained bees tend to cluster around places where mines are buried in the hopes of finding food. Analyzing the footage captured by the drones could reveal where landmines may be hidden in the ground. But not all animals are trained to help with detecting explosives. Some were trained to deliver them. Many are familiar with the anti-tank dogs, that the Soviets trained in the 1940s to deliver bombs to German tanks during World War II, but have you heard of the pigeon-guided bombs? Just like dogs and bees, pigeons can be conditioned to respond to a particular stimulus. Say scoring in ping-pong means the little feeder opens up, so the pigeon. But how do you take your pigeon from playing ping-pong to guiding a bomb? Turns out in three easy steps. It starts with a simple moving circle. The pigeon soon learns that picking the circle means getting a reward in the form of fruit. After some time the circle was replaced with a moving metal window. The pigeon also got a metal beak, which was connected to A. This would help determine the exact point of contact on the moving metal window. After continuing to peck at the center of the window, the pigeon would be rewarded. And finally the bird was presented with the image of a worship, the pecking location and the image was used as an input into the guidance system of the glider bulb, where the pigeon. Whenever the bomb would start to go off track, the picture of the target would move from the center to the edge of the screen, but the train pigeons would continuously peck at the center of the target, which would bring the bomb back on track. The American psychologist and behaviorist, B.F. Skinner, who was behind this project, eventually lost funding since no one took his project seriously. The optics of having a bomb guided by A wasn't too good either but using birds as a type of weapon is not limited to the military. The Dutch police trained eagles to intercept unknown drones from a young age. The eagles will be trained to see the drones as prey as adults. Eagles would intercept the drones using their hunting instinct and take their prey down to a safe place waiting to be rewarded with. Even though the Dutch police reported a 95% success rate with these eagles, animal rights activists were not too happy and shut down the program. That's despite the fact that Teflon gloves were being developed for eagle cloth to prevent injuries by fast rotating drone propellers, which are extremely dangerous. 
The fact of the matter is that animals have been employed by armed forces of many countries to perform specific tasks. Falcons are used in some air bases in Lithuania to scare away burbs. Foreign object damage is a real hazard to airplanes. Dolphins and sea lions are trained to detect and mark underwater mines to protect the navies around the world. They can even attach a hook to underwater objects and help retrieve them. That includes a late 19th century steam power torpedo, which was detected by a dolphin and now sits in a museum. In some cases, technological alternatives are available. Instead of eagles, we could use drones that take down other drones, either by physical contact or by throwing a net at them to neutralize the propellers. Animals may be put in harm's way during military operations, and their treatment and care can be challenging in a combat environment. This is why the decision to use animals in the armed forces is a complex one that must consider both the benefits and the ethical considerations.